Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, Ramadan Mubarak, and welcome to the first session of our morning reflections on the 99 names of Allah. Uh, today we are going to be covering uh, three names of Allah, and inshallah we'll be continuing as such uh, each session covering three names. And we're using the book Reflecting on the Names of Allah by Jinan Yusuf uh, as a guide for our series. And so inshallah, that will be our guiding text. And to begin, inshallah, uh, there's a famous hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu in which the Prophet Sallallahu says that Allah has 99 names. Whosoever preserves these names will be uh, entered or admitted into paradise. Now, Imam Ibn al-Qayyim lifts up that preser preserving or preservation is not just simple memorization, that it's something more holistic, that in order to be someone that preserves, that as the Prophet Sallallahu lifts up, we have to be individuals that are not just memorizing the names, but we actually know the names. We incorporate the names into our lives. Uh, we understand what these names mean. We understand what they indicate. We not just uh, react in that aspect and, and go beyond the black and white of the text, but we also then uh, are proactive in utilizing these names. We call upon Allah using these names. We uh, use them in prayer and in supplication. And ultimately, we also use them as a way to connect to ourselves, to connect to the world around us, and to connect to Allah even more. So these names uh, are not just uh, flashcards that we remember or terms that we remember, but these are names that uh, when we learn them, when we implement them, when we understand them or try to understand them and build that understanding and that allow us to connect to Allah and as a result, connect to everything else around us, then we have the doors of paradise opening up for us in the way that this hadith lifts up, not simply just by our memorization, but the action that we take to holistically uh, take in these names. So inshallah, we ask that Allah allow us to be able to incorporate these names, to be transformed by these names over the period of this series and throughout, inshallah. So as I mentioned, without further ado, the uh, names that we are going to be covering today are Al-Hadi, Ar-Rashid, and Ar-Rab. Uh, now, you may be wondering that the names we're covering here seem to be out of order because usually we'll probably cover Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Malik, Al-Qudus. But uh, as I mentioned, we are using this text as our guiding text, and uh, it's covering each of the names in a topical fashion. So by the theme or by the meaning of the names, and uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be in that specific order that we're used to. So inshallah, there's benefit to it, but that's why we are starting with these names and these three in particular. So the first two names I lifted up, Al-Hadi Al-Rashid, concern this aspect of guidance. In Al-Hadi, you have the guide, the ultimate guide. The root meaning of this word has the connotation of being inclined towards something, having an affinity towards something. Um, when we think about guidance uh, in this aspect, guidance is something when we relate it to Allah, when we come to know Allah, when we come to be more aware of Allah, more mindful of Allah, by default, we become more guided towards Allah. But also on the subsequent part of this, when we are guided towards Allah, we also come to know Allah even more. So that's a two two way street with respect to uh, this aspect of knowing God and being guided. And when we are being guided to knowing God. Uh, so, so this aspect of guidance is something that's even more holistic. So when we think about this name, we want to relate it to, uh, to the analogy that let's say if we're on a path, we're on a street, um, and it gets dark, and we may get lost, as in any other situation, if we're uh, in a space that we're not familiar with. Uh, a guide or guidance is someone or something that can help us when we get lost, that can help get us to the right path or redirect if we're uh, you're not sure of where to go, that can accompany us along the journey when we, when we get scared or when we need someone to help show us the way that doesn't abandon us when we are most in need, that this name is something that we ask for on a daily basis, yet we might not think about it. Uh, every time we do our prayer, every time we uh, recite the first chapter of the Quran, Surah Al-Fatiha, we ask, we ask the imperative of guide us, guide us to the right path. We oftentimes know that we are asking for guidance, but do we ever think about who we are asking to guide us. And now we know that Al-Hadi is one of the attributes of Allah, the guide that when we ask or when we say, guide us to the right path, 
we know that we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be the one who guides us. Next, we have Ar-Rashid that goes in tandem with the guide. Uh, but Ar-Rashid also has this aspect of direction, of teaching. Um, so Ar-Rashid works hand in hand with Hidayah, which is guidance. Um, and guidance is something that continues along the path. But Ar-Rashid is one that helps provide direction to the right path, that helps us when we veer off to be directed to not just the right path, but to the destination that we are looking for. That uh, direction is something not just to one thing or another, but to that which benefits us, that, that helps us along the way. And the guidance is something that keeps us on that path. And that direction is something that helps us improve and helps us benefit from the journey itself. So this aspect of guidance uh, in Islam and, and in, these, in the reflection of these names is not just a one and done affair as we see in the lives of the prophets, that this guidance is something as human beings, we are inherently imbued with. We are given guidance when we are first created for basic survival. And then as we develop, we're given basic guidance towards faith. We are given the understanding of the existence of God. And as we are given the understanding to existence of God, we are then given guidance to remain on faith should we choose to accept it. And then we in are increased in our guidance. Uh, we are then increased in our guidance towards our ultimate goal, which is paradise, which is to be uh, in, in those gardens that are promised to those who seek them and those who come genuinely with faith. So it doesn't mean that this concept of guidance or this act of guidance will uh, be something that uh, makes us feel lost at times or that this guidance is something that will just come and then go. Guidance can come in a moment. Guidance can be over a period of time. But as human beings, we have a choice. And that's what elevates us at times uh, above the angelic uh, stations is that Angels don't have a choice for guidance. We do. So when we act on guidance, when we live with these names, when we incorporate these names, we put in the effort to be guided. We open our heart. We seek God. Not only do we seek God, we make space to uh, receive Allah, to, to have Allah op come and open our hearts and guide us. Uh, and as such, when we incorporate these names, we know that it's not just a one-way street, that these names transform us. So then we are also, uh, when we're guided and being guided, that subsequently, as we're being guided gently, as we are wanting to be guided nurturingly and lovingly, we too are people who are guides for others in a gentle and nurturing fashion, not in a harsh way. And remembering that we can't force people to be guided uh, as we may see them. We can't force anything like that on them. We can simply just be those who are gentle reminders, those who are nurturers, uh, and those don't, who don't harm other people. And now the last name that we have to cover today, inshallah, and this morning is Arab, the one that's often translated as the Lord, but uh, also has the connotations of the caretaker, the nurturer. This was the first attribute revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu in the context of revelation and Surah Al-Alaq, when it is revealed that Iqra bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq, recite or read in the name of your Lord, the name of your caretaker, your nurturer, your sustainer, who created, who created, that you have in Arab not just the one who is the Lord, as we oftentimes have this connotation of an overseer or a master and a slave, but that not just an owner of, of a dominion or a plot or anything like this, or of creation, but the maintainer of the existence, the nourished nurturer, the one who maintains relationships with what is been created. So we see in the uh, prophet's biographies, in, in the life of our prophet Sallallahu and the prophets before, that uh, the name of Arab is one that's invoked frequently. We have famous du'as in the Quran that are lifted up of Rabbana or Rabbi, that we, we call upon, we see our Lord is called upon as my Lord or our Lord, our uh, sustaining Lord, not just the Lord that is the overseer or the master to the slave, but the Lord is the one who taught. Iqra bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq, khalaq al insana min alaq, that you have uh, the, the, the Lord that is not just the one who creates, but the one who has created diligently, the one that has taught you, the one that has nurtured you, the one that you can turn to in any situation, as you see with these du'as that are made, uh, whether in times of difficulty or times of uh, success or times of trial or tribulation, this name is invoked. 
So how do we live with this name? We first off know that our Rabb is not just a Lord, is not just an overseer, or a master to a servant. Our Rabb is our sustainer, our nurturer. We want to see when our Rabb was present in our life. We want to call upon our Rabb like our prophets did. We see that the Prophet in his most difficult day after at the time of Ta'if, uh, what lifted up this, this dua that anta rabbul mustad'afin wa anta rabbi, that you are the Lord of the oppressed and the downtrodden, and you are my Lord. When he was oppressed himself, he called upon uh, the Prophet uh, the, the, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the, not just the Lord, but as the caretaker, as the, 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 uh, the maintainer, the sustainer, the cherisher, the caretaker of and nurturer of these uh, individuals who are, who are downtrodden. And so inshallah, we remember uh, as we close out today that we ask Allah to be a guide for us. We ask Allah to be a guide for us, not just during this Ramadan, but a guide for us as we go to learn these names of Allah and to be our Rabb, to be our Lord, our nurturer, our sustainer, and our keeper as we are on this path to know Allah more uh, and on this path of Ramadan that we leave this uh, time much better than we entered it and inshallah much more aware of our rub our lord our caretaker and our nurturer and before we came into this space inshallah i mean jazakallah khair assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh we will see you tomorrow for another session